Today, we're going to be talking about dynamic programming again. More specifically, we'll be looking at the differences between bottom-up and top-down approaches. This is the second video of a series that I'm doing on dynamic programming. So if you haven't seen the first video, I suggest you check that out first, then make sure you come back to this one. All right, before we get into it, let's do a small recap of what dynamic programming is. Dynamic programming is an optimization technique that involves breaking down complex problems into smaller subproblems, solving them just once, and storing their solutions to avoid redundant calculations. But when talking about dynamic programming, there are two main approaches you can take when solving a problem. They're called bottom-up and top-down. Let's first take a look at bottoms-up. Bottoms-up, also known as tabulation, starts by solving the smallest subproblems and gradually builds up to the original problem. Now, we already know this about dynamic programming. In fact, this is one of the criteria for optimal substructure. So how is bottoms up different? Well, it works by using past information to build up to the optimal solution, and that information has to be stored somewhere. To do this, we would leverage a one or sometimes even a two-dimensional array, depending on the problem. We use this data structure to store solutions to subproblems and use past solutions to make optimal choices to eventually get to the final optimal solution. If you watched any of my Lead Code Problem walkthrough videos, then this should sound familiar to you. I recently covered the house robber problem, and the approach I described in that video is basically how bottom-up works. In any case, like I said, in bottom-up dynamic programming, we fill a table, like an array or matrix, to store intermediate results. Consider the Fibonacci problem, where each entry at index i represents the Fibonacci number at that position. The order of filling is crucial since we can't calculate dp of i without dp of i minus 1 and dp of i minus 2. The important thing to note here is how this problem calculates the optimal solution. As you can see, we have this line dp of i minus 1 plus dp of i minus 2. This is known as the recurrence relation, and every dynamic programming problem will have one. If you can figure out a dynamic programming problem's recurrence relation, then you just discovered the key to solving it. I'll cover recurrence relations a bit later, but for now, just know that in the context of dynamic programming, a recurrence relation describes the relationship between the subproblems in a way that clearly defines how an optimal solution is computed using the solutions of the smaller subproblems. Essentially, the previous problems help us build towards the final solution. Again, looking at our Fibonacci example, we can see at every index how the Fibonacci number is calculated by looking at the previous two indexes and adding them. This continues until we get to the final index, which will calculate the Fibonacci number of 5 in this case. Alright, now let's shift our focus to the top-down approach. This approach focuses more on recursion, but as discussed in the first video, the downside of recursion is that it will produce a lot of repeat work. If only we could use recursion without the extra overhead. That's where the top-down approach comes in. We eliminate the costly effects of repeat work by leveraging something called memoization. Memoization is just a fancy word for a simple concept, which is the case for a lot of things we learn. It means saving the previous function call results in a dictionary and reading from it if we make the same call again. And no, I didn't say it wrong. It's memoization, not memorization. Memoization will help us cache our previous recursion results so we don't recalculate them again. Here's some sample code that leverages memoization for the Fibonacci problem. To give a quick rundown, at the beginning of the function, we do a check in our memoization dictionary, and if we find it, we retrieve the value. This is crucial because if we already solved this subproblem, then we can just check the memo to avoid any repeat work, after which the problem continues as normal, with the recurrence relation showing up again right here. Then we must catch the result with memo n equals res before returning. Any newly computed results are added to this memo before returning. This ensures that if the same subproblem is encountered again while recursing, then the solution is readily available in the memo, preventing redundant work. Speaking of redundant work, do you ever find yourself struggling during coding interviews? If you're looking for more in-depth training on dynamic programming, or really any topic related to coding interviews, then Tech Interviews IO is for you. What makes us different from most coding interview prep services is that we offer a comprehensive curriculum where we cover data structures, algorithms, behavioral interviews, salary negotiation, and even dynamic programming. Another thing that makes us different is that we focus on coding patterns. What does that mean? Well, instead of showing you how to solve a problem, we give you proven techniques to help you identify, break down, and solve a wide variety of complex coding problems. With Tech Interviews IO, you'll be able to prep faster, retain knowledge better, and feel more confident the day of your interview. And you can try it risk-free. We have a bunch of free content. Just sign up at Tech Interviews IO 
give it a shot, and if you like it, then consider buying. Link is in the description below. Alright, back to the video. So that's pretty much it for memoization. In any case, now you might be asking yourself, which is better, bottom up or top down? Well, the answer is that it depends. In fact, I would go so far as to say neither is better. It's just up to personal preference and whatever makes more sense to you. Let's go over the main differences between the two approaches. The top-down approach provides flexibility in exploring the solution space, with the advantage that the order of computing subproblems doesn't matter. This approach suits problems featuring partition-type scenarios, like counting ways to split a string or determining unique paths in a grid. It aligns well with the depth first search style, making it suitable for problems with sequential decision-making. On the other hand, bottom-up involves a systematic and iterative filling of a table, making it ideal for problems with clear dependencies between subproblems. Order matters for bottoms up, especially when the sequence of subproblems is clear. This approach is commonly used for problems involving a grid or matrix. Some benefits are that it offers a straightforward time complexity analysis and avoids stack overflow issues. In general, I recommend starting with top down for its intuitive nature and flexibility. Both approaches work effectively. All right, so those are the two approaches. If you watched my previous video, then you should now know the concept of overlapping subproblems and optimal substructure. Overall, the concept of dynamic programming is easy once you understand these two concepts, but the glue that holds these two things together is the recurrence relation. And that's the hardest part, trying to determine what that recurrence relation is. In order to develop your intuition for dynamic programming, you need to practice, but I find it's better to practice with a plan. What's really helped me is familiarizing myself with common patterns. Patterns like grid-based problems, knapsack variants, or two-sequence type problems, and more. So that's going to be the topic of the next and final video in this series. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that if you're interested. Also, if you learned something new, then also hit the like button. It really helps out the channel and pushes this type of content out to more people. With that being said, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.